Are you in the need of a custom theme song for your YouTube channel, podcast? Then reach me out at fiverr.com slash julioG25 and I will get you your own personal song done for only $5. Damn right, you heard that, $5. Gonna wake up every morning feeling heroic? Hell yeah, let's get that done. So you can make you your own ringtone wherever you want to wake up to your alarm when you're late for work and you just want to feel like you can speed through the day, then yeah, I will get that done for you. Like I said, just reach me out at fiverr.com slash julioG25 for only $5, I will get that custom theme song done for you. But other than that, enjoy the show. We are back for the second episode. <laughs> Woo. I'm Julio. I'm Kevin. Well, welcome, Kevin. What's Gucci, bro? <laughs> Nothing much. I'm really excited to be here. I didn't think it, my first time would be like this, but gotta start somewhere, right? Gotta yeah, gotta start down. somewhere. Obviously, this is obviously my second time, but yeah, I'm enjoying this as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. It's so, all right. So, tell me about yourself, Kevin. What do you do? Where you right. from? What's the social security number? Well, my social security <laughs> number is 622, <laughs> and you're going to have to find the rest out later, so, so stay tuned. I'll get give you his address so you can get him. Every half hour, I'll tell you the next three digits. <laughs> now, my name's Kevin. I was born in uh, the good, grand, big, blue state of California. Fuck yeah, me too. <laughs> but I've been living here in the desert most of my life, so I don't know how cool that first... Uh, Dude, are we like is. brothers or something? Cause like <laughs> we could be. I was born in California too. What's what your part? mom's name? Uh, Gloria. Dude, that's my mom's name. Oh shit! Not we really, might be it? brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was born in Los Angeles, more specifically Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Oh shit! So you're actually from there? I'm a Baywatch baby. Baywatch. <laughs> I was born in the same hospital Michael Jackson was. Oh shit! Really? Yes, sir. Dude, that was legit. Yeah. So we shared. That's the only thing we share in common. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're not. Well, I like kids. I work with children, but I like kids in a different way. Okay. <laughs> Don't put it like that. <laughs> just just straightening that out. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm from Orange County. I'm up from, like, near Anaheim, Santa Ana. So we're not that far away. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, so it's it's, it's nice. Mexican-Americans, man. I know, right? We're out here. We are legit Americans. <laughs> we're, still, we're still doing it. <laughs> we're still strong. So, all right. So... So today we're going to be talking about, um, from last time we just did an introduction with my friend Arhenis, and uh, we are actually doing one with Kevin, He's uh, Arhenis couldn't make it, so I asked Kevin to come in, and he's actually very excited. And I'm here because I only live two miles away. That is, right, you, yeah, that's right, you live on, I'm not going to give you your address out. But. Yeah, 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 we'll save that for later. We'll save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so pretty much, uh, we're just going to be talking, for this topic, uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, social media, the big old trends that happen on social media, and then obviously reality TV shows, which kind of goes into the whole social media and trends. But yeah, let's get started. So, so how do you use social media for your everyday use? Like, what do you use for it? So initially, I use social media to keep in touch with friends, colleagues, family members in and out of state and the country. But as time passes on and social media platforms have evolved, <laughs> I've fallen into the spell of just using social media. As a meme factor. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> memes left and right. For memes, <laughs> jokes, and most recently, I've tried to filter my Facebook feed to give me the news that I want to read. Oh, shit. Oh, so you actually do that instead of just having a lot of pop-ups? Yeah, so... the cookies? <laughs> so I got... I, Maybe half a year ago, I just got, you know, I noticed that there was a lot of stuff I didn't really care too much about. Um, so, I, I noticed I took advantage of the filtering tools at Facebook, which is probably the biggest social media platform out there, internationally, I, w- I would guess. Um, yeah, it's like a billion dollar, is it a, is it a billion dollar company? It's probably a trillion dollar company. Oh, shit. <laughs> at oh, this we, point. Should we check that out? But we might, yeah. We check my sources. But, 
Yeah, that's but, yeah. pretty cool that they do offer that that no. whole filter. I didn't even know about it. Yeah, so no, so every every post you see from someone that posted that commented from someone from someone from someone, you can say, I don't want to see this or it's not relevant to me. Usually, the reason I give Facebook is that it's obscene and inappropriate, even though that's not true all the time. I just don't want to see it pop up on my feed again. So I've kind of tiered that so it can give me only the sources and the relevant information that I want to see. But even then, it's a it's a full-time job kind of trying to filter your Facebook feed because thousands and thousands of things pour in daily and even that in itself is kind of annoying. So <laughs> I kind of given I've kind of given up on that on using Facebook as my means of reading news and articles. Instead, I go to the prime, to the sources themselves and seek it out myself, which takes a little bit of time, but it's totally worth it. Well, there you go. So that's what he, this is what Kevin uses his social media for. Stay connected with friends, get some news, obviously not no more. <laughs> There's a lot and, of... And always memes, no matter what. <laughs> this is, you gotta get some of those dang memes, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah, so now i found it. So Facebook is actually worth about $24 billion as of last year. $24 billion, $24 right? billion. So I, I would consider it the, the biggest platform. Uh, yeah, the, where I use it, I mean, I just use it for, you know, staying, like you said, staying in contact with friends and family. Uh, I definitely get all my news sources from uh, from social media, even and even sometimes word of mouth from other people. But I don't really rely on it too much. And uh, and yeah, like you said I, I also get it for those dank memes. <laughs> See, look behind there, you have a lot of neat memes in there too. Yes, you have uh, to tag your friends and all the dank memes. <laughs> so yeah, so there you go. So social media is a big platform that we all use. Nowadays, doesn't matter for what, it just became a big hit. Like, since the MySpace is even before MySpace, when the internet was introduced, when you had Yahoo Messenger or whatever the hell it was, AOL Messenger. Yes, you yes. Remember those days? Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> the that, dial up. That, dee, 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 yeah. dee, dee, <laughs> exactly. Dude, those were, the, those were the founding fathers of social media. So, yes, it's definitely people just, well, I will, I will guess Mark Zuckerberg, he just like, he got off from that improved on it and down then here we are today this is what, what we're doing now and and i think it is really effective but I, yeah i think it is, really is time consuming and really distracting uh obviously you know there's a lot of reports out there about like not reports but i would say ads that that i guess people pay for so that you won't have to text and drive or you can just wait to see so yeah so it's good, and yet at the same time, it's kind of pretty bad. <laughs> yes, it's just like everything else. You have to control it a bit. Otherwise, you'll get consumed in it, and then you're going to be scrolling through your feed, not even knowing what you're looking at, at 2.30 in the morning, when you have to wake up three hours later. And yeah, then, there you go. Like I don't, I've done it before. I'm guilty of that. I'm, gu <laughs> I'm guilty of it, too. I was going to point out that when we were young, we spent most of our time in front of the TV, but as technologies and social media has evolved, so to speak, it's kind of all that stuff from the TV is now on our computers and on our phones, so we can take it everywhere where we go. We don't have to be in our living room anymore. We can just be in our bed, just you like. You can be in your bed, you can be <laughs> under your bed. Just fuck, dude. You that's... can be in your car. Yeah, I didn't, see, I didn't even see it like that I mean, before. I mean, I just knew it was there, but now that you pointed it out, actually, fuck, I'm guilty as fuck. <laughs> hey, my hands are up, I'm guilty too. We're all guilty of it, but. I guess the differentiating thing is how guilty are you? <laughs> are you I would, I would say I'm pretty guilty. Are you guilty or are you super guilty? <laughs> I'm really guilty of it. And obviously, and I know... Uh, but that's the world that we live in now. Yeah, it is. and It's hard to escape. And the, and the times just keep changing and we just got to go with it. But but do we really have to go with it? Or can we actually, you know... Actually, obviously, we can't limit ourselves to what we do with our own technology. But do we, but many of us really choose not to and well for me and kevin we work in the same agency that's how i met kevin kevin met me and then so then and we went on from to there be. and <laughs> we got some for marriage <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we work with this agency where we work with kids and parents and i mean it's probably confidential but this is i don't think so i mean you can edit it out edit it out but <laughs> parents have you seen at least with the families that you work with, do you see most of them just give them their phones? Yes. And then that's how the whole day goes? <laughs> yes, that's exactly how it goes. Um, when we were young, we had to read books. 
whether we were waiting for our older sisters to try on their clothes at Dillard's, or if we're at a doctor's office, we might read a magazine. <laughs> had our Pokemon cards. <laughs> we had the original Pokemon Both cards. Them in our pockets. But now, but you were and you were reading still though, right? But you, you were, weren't you weren't that distracted though. We were reading. That's that's a big thing to point out. I'm glad you brought that up because we were actually reading hard copies of books or highlights magazines or newspapers. Whereas now, sure, we can we can still say we read one or two hours, but we really are reading one or two hours off a digital screen, which. You know, sometimes your brain can be addicted to, to yeah, screen and, time. So, and, and and also, I think what the biggest issue with like yeah, you might say you're reading, but is it really healthy reading? Like compare, because I know most of the stuff that gets sold out there, like I say for a book, mm-hmm. like a book can vary a lot. You can be reading a Dr. Seuss book, you can be really a very uh, intelligent book, and yet you can also be reading U.S. Weekly. Where it just gives you that Brad Angelina Jolie, they just got divorced. <laughs> right. Or they're yeah. getting a divorce. So, in other words, I think, I feel like magazines at the time were, it's, was the social media, I guess, that you were reading at the time where it was useless information, in my opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. and, no, and note to that, to Brad Angelina Jolie, my, my respects. <laughs> <laughs> Give a shout out to them. <laughs> but, I, but yeah, I feel, I feel like there's, the from the whole magazine thing it has progressed more into what's in our phones and what we consume useless information in my opinion like i i like the fact that before how they adopted the kids uh, they weren't even like related to them whatsoever i feel like that that's good news you know because you're actually seeing somebody putting the effort in to actually going into adoption adopting other kids and then you have the stupid one where like you're getting into their lives where they're actually getting divorced and stuff and, the, and that's bigger than when they adopt the kids, which I don't think it should be more important. You know what I mean? Yes, 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 but, yes. But they're celebrities, and that's what they that's what they get. I don't want to say they get paid for, but that's what they're known for. You know, and, uh, and, I, and in my opinion, I think it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really does. When they can be doing better, better, better things. But yeah, so there we go. So social media, it's a big issue. Uh, um, yeah, I just want to add another thing about, you know, what you were making the distinction between useful information and useless information and that's besides the advertisements even if you're you know social media is designed for us and our brains and our eyes to kind of skim through it or like scroll through (laughs) it really quickly we read headlines we can read 13 14 15 headlines maybe in under two minutes but then you really only remember a couple and even then you don't go in depth as far as what that headline is you don't sometimes you we're even we're at a time where we don't even click the link to read the article. We just read missile strikes in Syria, and then that's it, you know? And but how do you, com- how do you compare you one sentence to reading... The whole article, like, you're just reading there's missiles attacks, correct? Yeah. And then, but you don't know about it, like, what the hell's going on? If you haven't been keep, keeping up with what's going on in Syria right now, it's some legit shit, you know? It's, it's fucking scary, in my opinion. It's important, yeah. And it's important to know, to keep updated, because that way you know what's to come and if you're not if you one day you just wake up and you find that there's a freaking atomic bomb hitting your place and like what the fuck it, I don't know I mean I think it's just scary as hell if you're not informed and uh, but yeah keep going on I mean that's that's a really interesting point it just it just has to do with our attention span you know um, I think kids especially kids growing up the kids we're talking about now that might be between three and seven or eight years old they have a tablet and smartphones and they have games but they're not, by the time they get to our age, they might not have those, that brain that's been developed to, to ask questions and to think critically of all these things because our brains are conditioned to only absorb that headline, you know, just little bits of information all the time, endless amounts. We don't really stop and read a book. We don't stop and read the whole article. As Hell yeah, dude. That, I think that's important. And like you said, this in this podcast, it's all about ideas, talking about... Uh, thinking outside the box too as well and i think that's important like you mentioned kids probably won't think about outside the box like we do uh we're, we're obviously fortunate to actually have yeah we're, i feel like our generation have this, you know? yeah we've been we've been like a bridging generation where we grew up with books and textbooks but now if you were to go to even just back to when we were in high school and we we're in our mid-20s Technology um, is really starting to kick in for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's when digital books were coming in. Like now in high schools, they have a bunch of digital-based books and worksheets and packets, whereas we had hard copies 
we had paper. As you can see right there behind you, like, I have my own hard copies. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of, actually, the whole digital thing. I mean, I'll probably get it if it's something small, but yeah. other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, not used to it. You're right. For convenience, it works out, but, you know, nothing beats having your hard copy collection of books as opposed to being like, hey, check out my book collection on on my iTunes, like look at all these audiobooks that I have. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Nick, have it in your have it in your heavy backpack. Let me know. <laughs> Let me see it. Instead of your 124 gigabyte storage <laughs> on your iPhone oh, or yeah. your tablet. I mean, I I feel like I, I I understand like the time moves on. Obviously, we went on from having silent movies to like with audio and then eventually audio to actually having color, and then and then where we are now with everything's kind of mostly digital. And then 3D, 3D, and everything, virtual and, reality, and I and I understand that the same thing with books as they progress, like it, it's it was meant to be, it was meant to be at one point. It, it's obviously it is more easy and accessible just to have it in your pocket, not to be uh, a bother. Like I said, have it full in your backpack the whole time, right. just standing there. I mean, not standing there, but just like carrying it around carrying with the you. The weight of it, yeah. And and I get that, you know, it's really. Uh, hold on, I don't know what's calling me. <laughs> and it's really, it was, I guess, lose, losing its sense of touch, I guess. Yeah, it was inevitable, you know, that with the advances in technology that it would happen. So sometimes it really is hard to take a moment and stop and be like, wait a second, is this okay? You know, the year is 2017. Everything is becoming electronic and digital, but what does that say about our humanity as a whole, you know? Do, do we need to stop, maybe try to balance it out, maybe put an active effort into reading a book instead or the newspaper instead of instead of reading like i said us weekly or people people magazine right right and or just or, or then even online you know we talk about accessibility and convenience but at the same time there's a, a bad side to that in the sense that it's more we are more susceptible to having fake news or alternative facts or alternative <laughs> facts you know whereas anyone can go on a on Instagram or Facebook and you know post articles or write for a website that just wants to gain a lot of get a lot of money from ad revenue but so they put out stories that people might click on but they might not really be helpful for your life or might not even have a real important issue at hand you know yeah, it might just be yeah, some definitely. nonsense like this person got married or <laughs> this person again this person got divorced someone got arrested Justin Bieber got arrested you know uh, and like I said, I, like, like I, I, I feel for celebrities, you know, like they, it fucking sucks a lot that paparazzi is always over them <laughs> over the smallest things. Right. It's like, oh, look, he's drinking Starbucks coffee instead of what he was drinking yesterday, <laughs> Dutch Bros or whatever the fuck it was. And then I think you have the important things that sometimes they don't even bother to talk about. Uh, there was one that happened like a couple a couple of years ago, I would say, a year or two ago with, you know, the rapper uh, Akon. Mm-hmm. Where he went to Africa and built like this uh, big old electricity like, system, electricity or, like, system or like a water system for the people for a small town in Africa. Like holy shit, I think that's fucking great how they're investing their time into something you know I guess rewarding in itself for yourself and then for other people. And yet there was no no coverage of it nowhere near it. very little news outlets were covered that covered that and I feel like that's a shame. Yeah, it didn't get the ten- sometime. For once, someone does something good and they don't, it doesn't get the attention it deserves, you know? Where when they're just waiting for someone to fuck up and then they're blown up out of proportion. And, yeah, and then and that, they haunt them the for the best. rest of their life. <laughs> it's, a, it's part of their reputation. Like, who, who was who's the one that got the battery? Was it like Mel Gibson? Was it he what the they one? Like, him? Like, he I had like remember. the phone calls about him saying, like, he's talking shit about his wife. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, he was going to kill her or something like that. And then that was the bad reputation he got. I mean, obviously, I don't think he did any of that. So much for Passion of the Christ. I know, right? <laughs> did you know Passion of the Christ was the number one R-rated movie, like, in the whole cinema world? Really? And guess who beat that after friggin' thir- 12 years later? Who, what? It was the Deadpool. <laughs> oh, really? Deadpool knocked it out, so... That's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, so there, there's a cool fact. In my opinion, I think Passion of the Christ was a good movie. I mean, it's obviously really brutal. And points. powerful, yeah. <laughs> but... But uh, bad Deadpool is better, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> we have Deadpool winning by one right now. Winning by I'm one. I'm not voting. <laughs> I'm not voting right now. <laughs> <laughs> so right, so so now we covered our whole our whole issues of social media and our likeness of social media, from obviously Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
the, the Snapchats and everything, there are very huge amounts of trends that go around. Like, like let's let's go with Twitter. Twitter is the the main of trends with the hashtags. Like, yes, yes, yes. Like that picked up real quick in like 2010 or whenever the hell it started. That sounds about right. It's about yeah, because I think it was just like you just put how you feel, and then eventually yeah, it started was, the it, hashtag. It just was Facebook only statuses is what I saw Twitter as when it came out. So I was like, what the whole point of this? Like, I'm just gonna write my just statuses. That's 180 it. characters, whatever. 160, 140. But now people on Twitter find out news more quickly than some news outlets because they're tagging people locally and events locally and then that just goes off on a chain reaction yeah and i and i and i make i don't, like i'm a twitter user i used to use it a lot like crazy now i back down a little bit more i'll, I'll at least form everything around i back down a little bit more but yeah twitter was fucking addicting <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna i got off of that and obviously today we have one of the biggest twitter addicts which is our own very own president. Yeah, uh, right. Whoever knew Twitter would be the plot, the the media outlet of uh, the, the, the first dictator of America. <laughs> of the POTUS. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hashtag not my president. <laughs> but but in in the big picture, that sh- that just shows how effective these social media platforms are because, like you said, millions and millions of people are subscribed to them and follow them. So if that's what they're on every single day then I don't want to give credit to Trump or anyone but they know how to reach people you know and they know how to use it well unfiltered too because it's just the president's word getting out directly to the people there is no media in the middle to kind of fact check it also like in the back like in the old days too where you just had to like stand in front of a camera and talk to the people and then you were like okay like what's going on through his mind <laughs> yeah exactly. and obviously we we at least how i see it like we just we just see the monkey with the <laughs> <laughs> with the symbols <laughs> with the symbol that's how i see it i mean like uh, i'm not saying he's like a really dumb person and i'm not defending him either like i gotta give him credit all right he's he's obviously at the top he did something right he's a fucking con artist well his, so he's pretty smart t- yeah his whole team his knows smart knows about media knows about propaganda they know they know the viewership and the demographic of people that watch you know fox news or cnn or CNN whatever the hell or, you want or call breitbart it. you know so it's it's a very powerful tool but in the wrong hands it's still as powerful but maybe not for the right cause definitely yeah and and at least now we do get to see what he really does think in his spare time because uh, obviously there's ones he's going off talking about I remember what the hell was he talking about last time he was talking about something serious yeah on Twitter and then out of nowhere he said Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, ratings for <laughs> yes, this reality the TV sh- yeah the apprentice that it was it's been going it's been going down low and then off of that that big trend went off with him and it's just insane. <laughs> and, and don't forget that he says sad at the end with the exclamation point. Oh, did he? <laughs> well, on a lot of his tweets, he says sad. Sad. Uh, there, I, there was a trend, too, that I remember. Uh, I used it, too, where they said, uh, explain a movie badly. But they used Trump's, the way he used to word things. Uh-huh. And, God, that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> and I fell for it. I mean, like I, I fell for that trend. And kind of like a lot of people fell for dabbing and uh what's another good one that's out there that a lot of people use trends yeah trends there's always there's the dab there's that stupid water bottle flip the water bottle another one that kind of i don't know if it came from a clothing brand or what but it's everywhere it's it's something something but what is it relax and be calm or oh yeah keep calm and let superman save the day or whatever yeah. the fuck it is or they it's say. like it's it's been it's been a powerful trend about keeping calm, but yet we're kind of at war with <laughs> countries all over the world, and people are struggling, and they're trying to strip health care, yeah. and, and people are just, the trend is to keep calm when it's kind of hard to keep calm sometimes. Yeah, yeah right. I think right now, I think it is really fucking scary. Uh, I don't know, remember when you were 18, when you signed up for like FAFSA or whatever, and they made yes. you sign up for Select a Service? Do you remember that? 
Select? No, I don't. No, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I did. I, I know after I did the whole FAFSA thing. Maybe I was just on one hour of sleep. I <laughs> just like, fuck it. I, that's what I was on <laughs> when I was 18, so don't remember. <laughs> well, I do remember that. I remember sitting in my computer, filling out my FAFSA. And out of nowhere, the selective service thing came out. And I read the whole thing. I'm like, what the mm. hell is this? And, and then I found out and that's when you get drafted is in case of a war. Yes. They already got your info and everything. And I, like, I remember now, yes. And I'm like, shit. But I remember I'm, I didn't want to accept that it was real, so I was like, this is this isn't And I believe happen. it's mandatory by law, I think. I yeah, think, I think you're I think right, it is. So, there, so, I, so I had to sign up for it, so I'm like, shit, do I really need this money? <laughs> <laughs> and and like, I'm like, I don't have nothing against the military. I think every country has the Needs right to have a military. Absolutely. And... And yeah, but for me, I, I just, I, I just, I don't want to go. I, I really do appreciate everybody else who goes for me, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not bashing them or anything like that. Like my big respects, and but yeah, I had to sign up for it. That, that if it was mandatory, and I feel like the day's coming close. <laughs> You're like, now I wish I can go back and and not, <laughs> not, not get no, that fast. No, get that fast <laughs> <of> money. <laughs> Another interesting thing, real quickly, about uh, trends that we're talking about is how our modern dictionary is being you know how every year they add new words to the dictionary yeah webster's, webster's yeah, web, dictionary for whatever. example you're right yeah and a lot of words come from phrases or sayings that are hashtags or are twitter like trends are they was webster really adding that or well i'm sure they're let me I, I can't think of a specific example maybe like google would be an early 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 one like the verb to google something I, that is true. Like, Google's just like, I don't know. I don't know what it really means. <laughs> and, and then it became a thing. You know, and then people are like, this is on fleek. No, that's on fleek. No, this is on fleek. And then the word's like... That shit's on fleek, bro. Running for hey, president. <laughs> thank you. It can still happen, okay? It can still happen, dude. I'm, I still have my hopes up. I still got that Obama hope. So got that Obama? Obama taught me to have hope. An 08? Oh, I, in my opinion, I think it was Star Wars taught me how to have hope. <laughs> Whatever inspires us. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. We can draw hope from a lot of different sources. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. You were saying, let's go back to this. No, just, just, <laughs> just how language and how people talk on social media, sometimes it's not, it's not correct grammar or English, but if the mass population is is talking that way then I guess it's not too far-fetched to say that that's how our language is nowadays I guess it's evolving too <laughs> yeah language is evolving you know like what's like what's that word that uh, I mean I've used it a couple of times I'm guilty of it like I really don't like to follow like these words like you said but there was this one yeah, the and they did ratchet say, yeah, <laughs> yeah so, like we know it's an instrument to like fix tools and shit and yeah, we use it as a term for calling somebody ghetto. <laughs> yeah, dude, rat, that's a good example, ratchet. Because when I first heard that word, I was like, "What is this word? I'm never going to use this word." But surely enough, as the months and years pass, it just became part of an everyday conversation, and it's an adjective that you can d use to describe people that are ghetto, ghetto, <laughs> or like ratchet. You know, that's a word. That's a word now. Maybe that's in the dictionary. With a different meaning. With a know? different meaning, that, like that is a second true. meaning. Like you know, I have like different interpretations. Mm -hmm. Like what's what's the one word? They'll that... say North American, someone that's really ghetto or something <laughs> that's really ghetto. Hey, and did you see her yesterday? She was really ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was I was seeing the definition like that. <laughs> but yeah, I, Man, that like, club is ratchet. Do you, or yeah, that too. Or, but me and Kevin went clubbing a couple couple weeks ago. I was fun. Uh, yep. We got yeah. pretty ratchet. Yeah, they get pretty ratchet. All right, so I'm going to trap you in this. Remember I told you I was going to trap you in a conversation now that we're on here. So, like I said, from that How day... How do I get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> the door's locked, dude. You can't get out. <laughs> Shit. So, as a trend, I've noticed it. Since you mentioned it, then, I, then we later saw it more often. We have the trend about eating ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't come here with an appetite, but I might have oh, one shit. now. <laughs> so that was the whole philosophy of eating ass, man. I'm trapping you in this one. I feel like this is something... Uh, I feel like it's a necessary trend to understand it, if it's going on right it now. It is. Eating ass is... Um, it's the future. On, it's, in, it's, a, it's here. It's, the future is now. The future is And now. it's on social media. And there are memes that make fun of it. And there are videos on, on YouTube that 
criticize. Yeah, shout out to Sandra for sending us that video. <laughs> yeah, Sandra, thank you for that, for that insight. <laughs> Come here. But yeah, so, so obviously we were, we were outside my house talking about for a good half an hour to 45 minutes. I kept track. I know because I kept looking. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Yo, we're still talking about eating ass. We're still talking about eating like, ass. I need a stretch. So yeah, so I feel like that was really, that was really, that was a really interesting topic because obviously, as like you said, as times progress, I'm pretty sure everybody just used to just used to do the missionary, or doggy style. Now the traditional things. The traditional marriage. When you get married, all right, let's go ahead. Let's do this. The only positions positions you know. And now we're going to eating ass. <laughs> so how do how do you how do we get from 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 basics to now? <laughs> from basics to now, you know, it really is just corporate. It's just media companies, corporations, you know, programmers, directors, networks. They kind of have been removing a filter that kind of had some decency for the American people. And then together with that, it kind of picks up momentum in, in social media platforms. And then with the, all, the, all the exposure day after day, day after day, kind of these explicit, whatever, you know, gross, intimate, sexual things become kind of normal, normalized. But yeah, like obviously... Uh, and then they become trends and then people... And, and, and to be honest, trends, are, trends have been going on for like forever, mm-hmm. since like the 1920s or whatever, like... Uh, you know how the whole what did they what they used to be called like the floppy dancers or whatever they were, where women were like were just flapping around dancing. Belly dancers? No, they were like belly dancers. Slippers? Something like that. They were called like slipper sleepy dancers. Correct me guys if I'm wrong, but ratchets. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were called back in the day. They were called a bunch of ratchets. <laughs> the, the 1930 ratchet movement. And then and then we have and obviously um, we had times progress with dancing we're actually where it used to be just partners and waltz that's what it used to be right then we went to women single dancing with like mini skirts and like little beads but that was it and people saw that i was like the biggest crime a woman could commit like the, like the the worst on the scale you yeah know? yeah but worst on we, scale but now we've moved so, so many degrees of to to twerking <laughs> to twerking and eating ass to eating ass turkey and eating ass man it, it, like I said, it's a big progression, and sex sells. Sex sells, uh, and that that's definitely something that um, it's successful. <laughs> <laughs> successful. That's that's a good one. <laughs> that's another thing that happened. Yeah, you know, they're pe- called they're called flappers. That's what they were called flappers. Is this how I can see here? Like the ones that would just be like flapping around, like I've seen I've seen this in videos. Before. I remember those. Yeah. So then, like I said, they just progressed. But this, this on. was seen as like too like. Too like revealing, too reveal. I don't say like too revealing, but like really uh, explicit dancing compared to like what we see as twerking today, or like the grinding once each other. So I think that's what that was back in the day. But in, 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 fast forward, and now we have people, body contact at all we have, times. <laughs> we have dry. We we go to the clubs and you, and it's just dry humping. Dry humping. People don't know how to dance. There's no swing dancing. You know. You, people dance to like Latin music, which is great, you know. But sometimes that gets really uh, sexual. At points, I, I guess uh, there's. It also s- depends on how much you've been drinking. <laughs> that too. How many cups of uh, how many cups? <laughs> and also how get? dark the room that you're dancing in is. And yeah, how lit it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is one that we use a lot. It's called we just. The, See, even the word lit is another thing. It is another. And just using the word fire, like <laughs> instead of describing the party as very intense, exciting, and intimate, you just say, "Yo, that shit was fire," and then people know <laughs> what you mean by just using one word. Yeah, or, or for us, we just use the emoji. The, yeah, the fire. Or, <laughs> see, see, Julio. Now we don't even use words. We just use an we just, emoji. <laughs> we touch. We touch a picture, and then that says it all. Like we already know what you're talking about. That's that's just insane to me too, and. And I feel like the youth from us, I say from like the ages 35 to younger, I feel like they understand that concept compared to the people who were actually born like in the late 80s and below that. Not like 80s, more like uh, mid 80s and below. Like they have a hard time understanding all these concepts. And, and I'm not saying just because they're old people, but they just, I guess they didn't go with the times as we did. Right, right, right. And, 
and yeah, I mean, they didn't get it in their development, in their developmental years. They're getting it now as adults who have already have their set ways of life and communicating. So they try to. I see people, you know, for example, my parents. First of all, I never thought they'd ever have a Facebook, let alone an Instagram. <laughs> yeah, me neither did. Me neither. <laughs> like the couple times where I've checked my phone and it says your dad wants has your su- your suggested friend on Facebook or Twitter is your dad, and I'm like, whoa, times have really changed. You know, <laughs> I never saw this day coming, but it's you kind of you can't escape it, you know. And then you see your dad like like some some chick like half naked, and like dad. Yeah, and then what's it says going on? <laughs> it says your dad likes Jennifer Aniston. And you're like, okay. oh, I, didn't, I didn't even had a crush for Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> so that, uh, like, that's pretty cool, but like, I didn't know that. <laughs> and then there are the people that write complete sentences with emojis. Like, what is it? They're um, like, bathing suit, sun, wave, blanket, sandwich, beer, z z z sleep. So is that, so that what that describes the a beach? day at the beach? <laughs> that's what your vacation is. Oh, oh, oh my, uh, my, uh, my, my favorite original emoji. But I even I I still use the eggplant. No, not the eggplant. What the fuck? <laughs> but, okay, explain to me about the whole eggplant thing. I don't, I don't get that. I don't get it either. <laughs> I don't get it. I get the peach one. I get that one. The peach one looks makes a lot more sense. But you know, with the leaf at the tip of your dick, it doesn't really make too much sense. Doesn't make sense to me either. <laughs> <laughs> Purple too. Like, were you just like cutting off circulation for a while? And, I know, right? And you put a leaf on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, those damn emojis! But my favorite, my original favorite one, and let me see if you remember, is from Full House, when Joey used to cut it out. Yeah, that's. I feel like that's the original emoji for me, dude. Yes. Like, cut it out. Yeah. And then once in a while, while I'm typing, and they like they make some stupid joke, or whatever. I just put the cut it out, and that's me. I'm like I'm out, I'm out this bitch. <laughs> that's my that's my mic drop right there. Cut it out. And, and yeah, like you said, language has developed, and shit, I don't know where the hell we're going from here. At this point, I feel like we've reached the, the tipping point, but obviously it's not because we're. Uh, what was the uh, today? Uh, one of our other friends, uh, she showed me a video. Actually, we watched the movie yesterday. It was yeah, called yeah. the the Belko Experiment. Fucking great movie, man! I'm telling you that. Okay, that, okay. That shit is I haven't even movie. heard of it, but. Yeah, I heard a bit at once because my brother told me about it, and I'm like, okay, this was a really good movie, but I don't know, if I don't know, I'm gonna watch it. And then yesterday we went out to lunch. We're like, hey, let's just go watch your movie. Since we're here, yeah. And we're like, fuck it, let's go. And we ended up watching that one, which is um, where these bunch of white people are in Colombia. They have mm-hmm. their own corporation. Not the corporation there, but like one of the, I guess one of the branches of the corporation, like in the middle of fucking nowhere. And they're just like a big ass building. They're in there. They're working. And obviously, you you already know going. If you saw the trailer, you know what's going on. Well, well what's going to happen? But if you just went in there blindly, you're like, oh, shit, what's going to happen? Because they're about to go in. This is the security checkpoint. And they're sending back all the locals out of there. So then mm. once all the, all the actual workers, which majority of them were white people, you had like a couple minorities. You had like a, let's see. Yeah, uh, you had that. It was the one black guy I saw, and it was the fucking coolest guy ever. <laughs> and then you also saw. Uh, I guess she was. I guess she could be a local, but she was considered like very uh, intelligent. So I guess that's why they put it in there. And and as they're in there, this this overcom comes. That's uh, in the overcom. It says uh, you have uh, the next thirty minutes. You need to kill somebody, or we're gonna or we're gonna. Well, there's gonna be a consequence for not doing so. So then, like the Damn. whole fucking building shuts up with like steel. I don't know what kind of steel it is. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a steel expert. <laughs> <laughs> and and I always say everybody thinks it's a prank, which psychologically you would assume it's a fucking prank. And then since they didn't follow the demands, like four people died. Their heads just exploded. Blah blah what? blah. And you know what? And you know what was a new development because of that? Chip chip implants. <laughs> and so because the chips were implanted in their back so they, they would know where they were located just in case they got kidnapped. So that's how they everything. were able to kill them? Yeah, because they, like, they hacked into the chips. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they hacked into the chips and so they managed to kill them from that. And and like I said, from going on, it's a good movie. You got to check it out. <laughs> it sounds really interesting. I might have you to ever heard it. of James Gunn? James Gunn? Gunn. No, I he's haven't. A, he's a writer and director for Slither, 
one of my fucking favorite movies of all time, Super, uh, with Dwight from The Office. He's like a super, he's like a superhero. Hmm. He's like going around with a wrench, fucking people up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you always, uh, you see Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I've seen Guardians so of the Galaxy. So that's James Gunn. He's a okay. writer and director of Guardians of the Galaxy, and he wrote this one. He did this one. He did. Well, oh. he wrote it. Somebody else directed okay, it. Okay. But his writing is definitely there because if you see his other movies. They're just filled with jokes, and, and the jokes just fit properly with it uh, mm-hmm. from the situation that's going on. And with this movie, uh, there were definitely a lot of good fucking jokes going on with the situations that were going on. So it was a dark comedy with brutal fucking violence in the whole thing. So it's a very psychological movie when you see it, and the idea behind it, I guess its own philosophy, of survival of the fittest. That's how I saw it. And it's a great, it's a great damn movie. And like I said, and we're, how we're progressing from our debit cards and credit cards, I think that's what we're going to, which is chip implants. Yeah, you asked me about my social security number before. It could be integrated into us. From the fucking chip implant. Oh, the chip implant. <laughs> and the chip, chip, uh, chip implant. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get the monkeys in here, right? <laughs> let's do all the, make them do all the hard work. Obviously, for Trump, it's working properly. <laughs> <laughs> With those symbols going on. The nice symbols. And uh, yeah, like I said, so and like you said, social security, your debit card, your information, your tracking info, that's going to be coming pretty soon. And I know it's happening out in Europe. And for me, I get it. It's a good way to get going moving forward with your information and your, your information and saving it and keeping it secure. But fuck that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the scary part is who centrally owns and has power over that technology yeah and, and who knows maybe they have mind control over you well I'm in my opinion I mean fucking just social media is already mind controlling it is it is because it's kind of subconsciously it's kind of forming our our thoughts and our beliefs you know yeah yeah and, yeah, and, and I think chip imp- implant it's, it's the next level shit right there it's actually mind controlling you you never know what the hell they do like I said fucking blowing people's heads off with or it. just can you imagine ads playing in your brain somehow just that funny thing crazy. you mention it. There's actually this show. It's called Black Mirror. I yes, guess. Black Mirror. I was going to bring it up because they have that rate. In one of the episodes, they have like a rating system where if you don't have a certain rating, you can't do certain things. And that follows you everywhere you go, especially if that's implanted into your body. Yeah. You dude. know? Holy shit. Like you can't go in this bathroom because you're poor or you owe the IRS $5,000. So whoever has control of that kind of... It's, no one should have control of that. Yeah, fuck that, dude. <laughs> That's too scary. That's a, it's a good thing you mentioned that. I mean, like, there's there's many ways that you can see how the whole chip implant things. And, and fuck, it, it will become a trend later on. I'm not I'm not saying it is now, but it's going to fucking pick up steam. And fuck that. I don't, want, I don't want a chip in me. That's just me personally. Yeah, I don't either. Cause I'd rather wear my chip on a necklace. Yeah, I'd rather just carry just that shit I can throw it away in the canal when I, run, when I don't want to be tracked, you <laughs> I'm know? running away. <laughs> but yeah, but like in that episode of Black Mirror, the second episode is where um, the guy is actually in his own room, mm-hmm. and it's all controlled digitally. He's sitting around, like you can see... Like, like he has visuals and Yeah, he has visuals and sound. Yeah, oh, it reminds me of that old... For those of us, I remember that movie Smart House from the Disney Channel. Oh shit! No, I never seen that one. You never seen it? No. It's, it's basically this. It's basically a movie from the '90s, but it's describing exactly what you are. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Well, this one's like fucking R-rated, like hardcore. R-rated. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Disney Channel. And like it, voice commands, maybe, huh? Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing, because how you mentioned about ads and everything in the show, uh, in that episode where they're going, they're watching everything around them, they're watching the landscapes. It tells you when it's night, when it's morning. It's all fucking digital. There's nothing na- natural about it. And there's points where you have to go work on a treadmill, and you get that's how you get your credits. It's not that you don't get paid for it or anything. That's just your credits. They, it's I, I don't oh. remember clearly that they've, they've already implanted with something, or they already have something that they know of you. But um, every time he went back, he went back to his room. Uh, Something will pop up. Doesn't matter where the fuck you look. Up, down, left, right, straight. You had to watch it. It was either pornography. What? It was either the the show of like America's Got Talent or American Idol. You had to watch that, or some stupid ad that was trying to sell you something. 
You and, couldn't avoid it. And you couldn't avoid it. Even if you closed your eyes, the fucking machine knew and it asked you, you want to avoid this, you have to pay 10,000 units off what you worked off in your treadmill. So and you kind of have to watch it if you so want you to So you had to fucking watch on. it or you had to pay for it. That's ridiculous. That's fucking scary. Like, like you're being forced to watch something that you don't want. Pornography, stupidity of American Idol. Well, I mean, I, I think American Idol is cool, but there's like a whole levels of yeah, stupidity yeah. to it. Yeah. And then obviously ads, which is fucking insane nowadays how you're just... While you're just watching a video now on Facebook, I don't know if you notice that you're watching a video, and boom, a fucking ad pops up, and you have to fucking watch it. You want to keep watching the rest of the video, like yeah, like YouTube too. Well, yeah, YouTube always gives you the option to skip, and in Facebook, there's no fucking skip ad. Yeah, you have to. And you have to fucking watch it. it, and it's yeah, and it's fucking insane. It's invasive and, in a way, you know. Yeah, and like you said, so maybe chip implants. We get it. Fucking, we get our we get our view blocked, and we have to fucking watch him when we're there. Closed eyes or not, we're fucking watching it. I don't know. If, I don't know if we can get to that level or not. Hey, but and, but the way things are going, you know, things like that could be possible. Shit, I, and that's fucking scary. <laughs> yeah, we need to slow down. <laughs> yeah, we need to slow the fuck down. Let's go back to those shitty magazines. I yeah, pre- I prefer that. Yeah, pull the brakes, dude. <laughs> Give me that J14 and that People magazine. And I'm okay. I'm okay with fuck it. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I said, so that's I think that's where we're headed. Uh, not necessarily like bam right now, but it's definitely going there slowly, picking up steam. And and I think also, and like I said, now you have American Idol, like fucking reality TV shows. I, I feel that's another waste of time. I don't know about you, like, do you have a, a favorite reality TV show? It can go from fucking cops to like uh, America's Got Talent. To the Kardashians, Jersey I, Shore, Survivor. I have this weird thing of watching reality TV to kind of laugh at it because sometimes it doesn't seem so real. Even and, though it's called reality TV, you're you're watching people in situations that you're that no not really everyone is in, you know? And it's all it, I'm pretty sure some of it some a majority of it is scripted. But Oh yeah, I yeah. I think it's most of it is scripted. Yeah. I think it's scripted, but then I also feel like there's a lot of real moments. I feel there are real moments, but most of it is scripted. But I tell you, okay, we're gonna need you to go to the store. Feel free to talk about your day or from what happened the day before. Um, mm-hmm. And goddamn, it, and people fucking fall for it. <laughs> they really do. I don't. I don't. I, like, what do you think is the whole fascination yeah, aside of that? For me, I just feel like it's. A step away from your own reality and jump into the fucking famous people's reality. People love to step into other people's shoes and for a moment live a life that they might not have a chance to live or they just get a taste for it. You know, they want to feel a certain way or they want to feel powerful or they want to feel like if you're a girl, you want to feel like successful and pretty and wealthy. Like if you if you watch like The Hills or like Laguna Beach, I don't know. Like whatever the fuck show it yeah, is. Yeah, whatever the hell you're into. Because I know when I was in in high school, still uh, the biggest <laughs> fucking thing was Jersey Shore. Oh yeah. Fuck man, that was so popular. Yeah, I never fucking bothered to watch it. But you knew about it because everyone else was talking about it, right? Yeah, you fucking Snooky and that other bitch. <laughs> Don't ever say the word Snooky while I'm taking a drink, because. That's a funny word I forgot about. <laughs> who, who is that? Someone's name? Yeah, that was somebody's name, dude. It was that fucking girl? hilarious. <laughs> and like I'm like name, shit man. dude <laughs> and <laughs> well that, that's the one that's the one in the com- that pops out a lot for me it was huge at the time and I mean and I think if they're still um they might even still be running I don't know if it's still running but I know that, <laughs> but I know there was like a big they left something behind for fucking MTV VH1 to build upon? To build upon. Because fucking people love that shit. Yeah. And then you had, like, that little girl who was, like, um... God damn, what was her name? Like, uh... Baby... Oh. God damn, I know what you're name? talking about. I know what you're talking about. But I can't remember. You might have to ask Siri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to ask Siri. Siri's gonna be like, fuck you talking about? <laughs> and here's the thing. and And even then, like... Uh, social uh, not social media uh, reality TV shows have even hit uh, the music industry as well because like you see fucking P. Diddy doing his own thing yeah or Ice, Make, Ice oh, T 
I was it? I think it was Ice T too. I and, think he was doing his Coco own TV some show. Shit. Something like that. I remember they were just like um, um, some show where they were just making music, and then they were choosing people who the fuck they were gonna kick out to keep recording or whatever it was. And I mean, that's just insane too. How it was reached to that level as well. Oh, make, was it Making the Band? Making the Band, there you go. That's yes. what that shit was called, Making the Band. Yeah. Cat down, Kevin. I just remember, <laughs> no, you know what popped in my head? Danity Kane, and I just remembered they came, like that that, that group came out of a reality TV show, because that's how they gained popularity. Maybe they saw, the company saw their viewership, and they're like, oh, we have a lot of people that like this, so if we were to make them a band, it'd be successful, because... They already know the characters. They already know how they were formed. So that so know, in other words, I think like a more, good business plan. Yeah, too. definitely good business plan. But I also feel like we're responsible for it. <laughs> yeah, the viewerships are responsible for all these reality TV shows that get made. Yeah, because if they didn't have the viewership, they wouldn't have the ad revenue, and they wouldn't be able to broadcast their shows. And and I and I feel like an easier way also to keep track of that. Like I said, it's social media and trends. That's an easy way to keep track of how much how many how much people are talking about it all. How many likes? Fucking they have. hashtag and likes and views. They're like, oh, a billion people liked this video of this, of eating ass. <laughs> eating ass must be We're a back thing. Back to the ass eating. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's this song I, I listened to the uh, listening to. I heard it back in November, but I I, I listened to it recently. It's have you heard of this, this band called uh, a tribe called Quest? Yes. So they have a song. It's called We the People, and it's like a big. I feel like it's a big protest song about a lot of things going on in today's world. And one of the parts in the lyrics that it says, VH1 has a show that you can waste your time with. And I, and to me, I'm like, holy shit. Like, I have to talk about this, which is why I brought this topic of reality TV show. That's one of the quotes from the song? Yeah, that's one of the lyrics from the song. Oh, okay, okay. It's like, VH1 has a show for you to waste your time on. And is it really a big time waster? Or, or do we gain something from it? As far as reality TV goes, you know... It can be therapeutic to kind of imagine yourself in a world that you want to live in and create for yourself, but if you start involving yourself too deeply in it, you might lose touch of your own reality and your sense of wanting to be a certain thing because you might feel like you're already part of it because you're so drawn into the show and every episode and every season and all the trends that you might forget, you might lose sight of what you have to do in your own life to get to that point I forgot to pay this bill <laughs> <laughs> exactly we're like shit I forgot to eat I'm super hungry I haven't eaten yeah, in 8 hours the next thing you know it's 3 o'clock and then the next thing is like fucking 8 o'clock and you spend the next 4 hours just watching fucking reality TV and then just the day just went by and you didn't do what you might have needed to do I know I'm this, guilty of it I, I'm guilty of it a too a lot of us are you know uh, obviously, I, I spend my time, and, and I, I don't, uh, and I'm not trying to just include reality TV show, but I'm also including video games, movies, TV shows, yeah. Pokemon cards. Via, yes, anything. Like obviously, we invest our time, but we're, and some of it is like really fucking useless, but we're not getting it back, and that, and that's just the sad part. We could have done something better. We could have been out there helping out the needy, giving them you know food, or helping out kids. Giving them our. Some extra booster packs. Some extra booster packs, a little <laughs> Pokemon cards. <laughs> Anything, you know? Yeah, and, and like I said, I mean, it's fucking, it's fucking crazy how, how small from this, from social media, to fucking reality TV show, like how how it's a big thing, and even like during even like on YouTube channels, people are like, hey, give me a like, or give me share your or video, subscribe. subscribe. They're always fucking saying that, and it's like. To you guys, like I don't care if you guys subscribe to this or not. Oh yeah, yeah. I just, I just feel like yeah, this they, should be out there. Yeah. If you listen to it, that's fucking great. You made it through this whole thing. No, it's good. If it's quality stuff, why not? But you're right. There's a lot of garbage out there. Yeah, because uh, be careful. And they just do it for the for the likes, I guess. Psychologically, I feel like that's just like their way of a reward system. Like, oh my god, I got, I got a like, and then the next thing yeah. you know, I got twenty likes. Now I have to keep doing it, you know. Yeah, and then now like, I'm gonna get like a, now I'm gonna get ad revenue, so now ad, I gotta keep it up, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I was guilty of that too. We did a, but that's okay, you know. Yeah, we did a uh, a YouTube channel like back back uh, a couple years, uh, yeah, a couple years ago. We also we didn't get any steam off of it. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> Round two. And and that was our main focus. Um, obviously we all, we wanted to talk about movies and games and shit, which we're obviously doing now, but just in a whole 
the whole concept of everything. But then it was just talking about it, and we just wanted to make some money off of it. We want to be like the big YouTube hitters, and we obviously we didn't fail because our hearts were in the wrong place for it. <laughs> yeah, and you might have to. You just sometimes have to come back and give it another go. And this, this, to be honest, this is my other go, right here. Yeah, keep it up, man. And Good work. Yeah, and and I feel like I'm gaining something off of it because I'm learning off of you, and maybe and maybe you're learning something off of me that you didn't know about. Absolutely, it's. At the end of the day, it's important to have the conversation, you know. Yeah, I think we, I think we'd go insane. As a country, we, we need to talk things. more, especially in these times. You know, no, it doesn't matter what the subject is. We need to talk. We need to find common ground, and we need to be aware of what is happening before they get the chips into our heads. <laughs> <laughs> Start blowing our heads off. I was like, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not following this trend. Boom. <laughs> Implanted. <laughs> Uh, what was it um, you know, Grand Theft Auto Wasted? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, like I said, it's uh, it's it fucking sucks where we're at now, but I, to me, I still have a little bit of faith in humanity. I really do. So do I. I agree. If you don't have it, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's, get to it's a, a tough dark, way of living. You're gonna get into a really dark place real fast. Definitely, definitely, real quick. And, well, let's talk. Let's. Uh, I feel like this is really important because obviously, a big trend, a meme trend that's been going on around is that the word spraying that we might go into World War Three <laughs> pretty soon. Word on the street word is that the, World War Three is coming around via a meme. <laughs> Bro- brought to you by uh, by President Trump. <laughs> I, I can I can remember the frog meme's name. What's his name? Pepe. Pepe. Oh. Shit, I don't remember that. Yeah, god damn it, I forgot. The one that they always used to describe like a single bachelor, or like I don't know, like yeah. a sat. What? Yeah, I don't even know what that meme is, but it's so fucking popular. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. I I know what you're talking about. I just don't I remember the name of it. Maybe Samir knows. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's make a call. Let's give him a call. <laughs> Shout out to Samir. Hey, but World War Three. World War Three is right around the corner. Is it around right? the corner, or is it or is it already happening? Or is it just another trend that people are just kicking off? And I don't know the thing to understand. It's important to see that the modern war, modern warfare, not the video games. <laughs> modern <laughs> warfare you is, you know, it's not people necessarily always marching with boots on the ground and firearms, as traditional warfare goes. Now we have. Same again, technology, cyber satellites, warfare. cyber warfare. We have drones. We have. We can infiltrate people's computers and find out information about them. Whereas forty years ago, you had to park in a car with tinted windows and kind of just peer out. <laughs> a little and, satellite dish. <laughs> with a little satellite dish, trying to get that 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 Bluetooth reception or whatever it was yeah. called back then. Actually, did you know Bluetooth was actually invented back like in the seventies or eighties? Really? Yeah, but the technology they didn't get released until later on until the contract was over with the government or wherever oh, it was wow. that, that the lady made it. So, so that's a cool fact. <laughs> yeah, they talk yeah, I've heard that a lot of technology is actually not as new as new as us consumers because by the time we get it, it's already been used and planned out by the people that own the technology or the government that developed the technology. Yeah, they find they find out about it and they're like, "Hey, let's buy it out well, first before anybody else." Yeah, does. and they're like, "How can we make the most out of this?" Because you know? didn't they have they had internet back in like in the seventies, sixties, or eighties, whatever? Yeah, early. I mean, obviously it was fucking slow still, but it was a new invention. They didn't get released till the nineties, right? Something like, like that. Mid nineties, early nineties when it got released. So there you go. That's that's a big example of it of how. We don't really get to consume that much of this new technology that we have, and and yeah, so it's it's crazy where we're going right now because obviously, um, I mean, it's really fucking sad what's going on in Syria. I mean, I don't I don't like seeing what's going on, but it's it's a sad truth that we are yeah, viewing. At the end of the day, it's people dying unnecessarily. So, and I don't know the full story, but I'm I'm never in favor of people dying and getting gassed yeah especially innocent people i mean right especially people that are less fortunate less developed you know that's kind of that's really messed up you're kind of capitalizing on people that can't defend themselves mm-hmm. or what just to get like oil and stuff but world war three yeah it's happening i mean it's a war for resources I mean, like i don't like i like to be honest i don't really know how i feel about the whole missile launch like part of me is happy because obviously how they are wording it is retaliation because of the uh, 
mm-hmm. of the gas bombing, but then his actions speak differently. The president's actions speak differently because he obviously banned people from coming here, and then obviously he's like, I feel like he's like a two face. Yeah, two-faced it's very again. hypocritical because you're bombing a country, people are leaving it, fleeing their lives, they're trying to get to a safe place, and you're not letting them into the safe place. No, they're not. So that's kind of backwards. That's yeah, so, so it, in my view, at first, my initial response to it was like, like, fuck yeah, bomb the shit out of them. It, but that was my emotional time. And then as I'm, then I started thinking through it, and I'm my like, you know what? My logic kicked in. My logic kicked in. I think, that, I think there's a bigger part in this. I don't feel it was just retaliation because of the people, but I do feel like um, there's another story in play that they're not telling us. And I feel like that was just an excuse to do so. And, I, I and I, that I was the agree. moment they were waiting for. I would agree with that. But hey, but who knows? I'm just this is just my speculation, my theory. We are not experts on this. <laughs> <laughs> we're not CIA agents. <laughs> Warning. But but yeah, I feel like that's that's something people need to talk about. They need to know what are the intentions of our government because And how much money it's costing us, you know? I think what was it they said is like a like a million 1.9 million dollars something like per that per missile per missile he watched 59 of those fuckers <laughs> that's insane like imagine how much money we could do with all that I mean I get it it's for defense and everything but do we really need that much we're like the number one in fucking budget for yeah. military by like seven times by every who's like the second one is it like China yeah or... and, and they're I think I've last read that the United States spends on military on their military as much more than the next six or seven biggest m- armies combined oh shit so that's a lot then god damn so yeah but right like I said, but we like, don't have money for other things yeah like i said <laughs> i have nothing against our own military or any other people's yeah, military or people serving or veterans yeah, yeah i have no issue not. with that i have an issue with overspending when obviously here we have we have a big problem i think still going on up in flint michigan where the fucking water is yes. still fucking dirty, dude. Like, how the hell does that happen? Yeah, it, they should have used the 50, at minimum, 50 million from the Tomahawk missiles to fix they, the in- infrastructure. They could probably just, like, two out of those fuckers probably could have yeah. fixed a, a, not. I'm pretty sure, I don't know what the whole thing costs to fix, but I'm pretty sure they could have fixed half of it, and then the city could have put its other part in it to actually fucking fix it. But no, there's... So people out there without any water, and then uh, with dirty, they have water. It's just fucking it's polluted. A, it's just gonna mess your brain up. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just well, your normal water. But I don't know. You saw like there was some people who have been getting like rashes, and like some people have been losing uh, hair too. I like have memory problems. Oh shit! So it's got yeah. that bad too. Because the lead kind of you know lead is bad for you. Like if you consume it, so you know there's a humanitarian crisis as you're saying in Flint. But then we we have to go to another country and like flex our muscles for no reason. Well, there's a reason, but we can all agree or disagree on yeah. reasons. Yeah, like I, like I said, and, and it's and it's just our opinion, so you can disagree or agree on it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna get mad if, if you're like have a whole different view. I understand your view, like why it's important to have such a big ass budget in the military. But in my opinion, I don't think we need we need that much. Yeah, we need to prioritize other things too. Yeah, obviously our education system here. In, in a fucking country, it's we're supposed we're considered the best country in the world. Sorry if I offend you, but it's really not. I mean, yeah. we we have shit on our problems here, easily fixed, but they're we they're the, not willing. Yeah, we have the people, the money, the tax codes, but it's all the money always goes to somewhere that just benefits the rich people. You know, the people that own the military companies, the contractors, even like the food industry, the. Uh, the fucking the Apple production industry. The, I, I would just brand Apple by itself, but you know, just the computers. The pharmaceutical itself. industry. Pharmaceuticals, like they're the ones that benefit from us, and God, it fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're too powerful now. So, and watch uh, out for those chips. <laughs> yeah, and, and obviously, <laughs> some somebody's gonna fucking invest in that really big, and damn, it's in in our hand in our neck in our eye wherever the hell they're gonna put it in our contacts yeah it's something gonna, they're gonna do something with it and, and it's it's scary that they have this much power we give them that power because obviously we're the consumers we're the ones giving we're the ones working and spending the money on the things yeah like, like Nike's in our shoes so they actually go out fucking 
hire somebody to get paid 50 cents an hour <laughs> just to make our $10 shoes and come back here and resell them for 150 That's crazy. So we are responsible for the most part. Um, we don't see it. We decide to deny it. and It's hard to escape. It is. It's kind of what living in America is like, you know? America. <laughs> America, yeah. Work hard as fuck. Spend all your money on these nice looking products. Yeah, and... And make those people richer. And like I said, they're trends. Like, fucking iPhone's a trend, you know? You have to have the phone. Everybody else has it. Yeah. Why and not you, get it? And then people... You, you're you inclined to want the latest version of things, too, you know? Yeah, like, iPhone 8's coming out. Oh, I'm gonna stand in line for, we, like... Five yeah. hours, <laughs> 24 hours. Or these Jordans are coming out. I have to punch this dude or else I'm not going to get them. <laughs> I got arrested at finish line. Sorry. <laughs> did you get arrested for that? No, I'm just, oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just speaking <laughs> as a person that did that. Might have done that. Might have done or that. Like Black Friday, you know? Yeah, like Black Friday is another big trend, too. And I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it. I mean, I, I, bought, so I bought my 3DS, got it for 100 bucks. Hey. That's a good deal. <laughs> if you, you gotta find your savings, you know? Yeah, you gotta find your savings somewhere, but... You have to have a little control, though. But is it really necessary, though, to... to Obviously, the whole thing about Thanksgiving is for us to have time with our family. And yet, we're out... Capitalism says, fuck your family, go outside and spend your money. <laughs> <laughs> that new TV isn't gonna buy itself, you know? You gotta be here. <laughs> Use that energy from all that turkey and gravy and get your ass to the store at 6 in the morning the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and it sucks, too, because, like, I remember... Uh, I did... My first time I did Black Friday shopping was at midnight. Then I finally had money, and then they started moving the times from 12 to 10, and then 10 to 8 to 7, and then it's 6 o'clock. Sales go at 6 o'clock, which yeah, is fucking right. insane. So I can't even have dinner properly <laughs> before I can go out and shop, so I have to... Thanksgiving lunch. I know, we have to have Thanksgiving lunch. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> and, you, and the thing is that sucks that we fall for it. <laughs> In 10 years, gonna be, we're going to have Thanksgiving breakfast because Black Friday starts at 12 on Thursday. Maybe. Shit. And then they have Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. I mean, I don't really do Cyber Monday because I hate fucking paying for shipping. <laughs> Yeah, I could spend one hundred and fifty dollars, but then like the five ninety nine more for basic shit. I'm like, no, fuck that. <laughs> Hell no, no, I'm not. I'm calling it off. <laughs> not worth it. I was gonna drop three hundred, but three hundred and five dollars. Hell, Hell no. no. <laughs> I need that five dollars for. Do you, do, you, do you think you think it, it's a it's a good thing that Amazon or wherever, eBay or wherever the hell you buy your products from? Do that because psychologically, I know a lot of people that are like, nah, I'm not gonna buy that. Fuck, fuck the shipping. Mm-hmm. I want free shipping. You think you think it's good? That people sometimes that's the deciding factor. <laughs> what the shipping cost? Yeah, the shipping cost is just like, nah, we're not gonna do it anymore. Fuck that. I don't know. The big companies they make so much money that they can pay your shipping for you. Yeah, that's why they always put like, I gotta spend fifty dollars or more. Right, and then you get sucked into buying a necessary twenty dollars just to meet that fifty dollar yeah. shipping requirement. So it, it there's not what my dad always told me is that there's never anything really free in life it's it's compensated for in another way you know yeah i mean obviously nothing is really is free because obviously you really do have to work for whatever it is even if even though it feels like it's free you're fucking working for it some one way or the other yeah it's getting like someone has to make that product or that company just saved you ten dollars on shipping but you spent 25 extra dollars on something that you wouldn't have bought otherwise yeah so it kind of balances out you know Makes sense. It just sucks though. <laughs> yeah, it does. It just sucks that that's how that's how we fall into and God I wish there was there was a better way we can go about it, but there isn't. And but yeah. Look at that. Hour and eight minutes. <laughs> Already. Already. It doesn't even feel that long, man. Yeah, I know. I was so into our conversations. This coffee got me hyped. Coffee got you hyped. We've been down for another hour. <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, this is it. This is this is this is Julio and this is Kevin just having another conversation. Because obviously when we when we're we're working together, when we get the chance, we we talk about shit like this and then that's why I invited him over. Yeah, it's good to to not be interrupted in a meaningful conversation by a kid that needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, would rush him. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm always fine with that. Yeah, it don't matter. I mean, it's part of the job. You gotta take care of the the next, the future. You know. Because, yeah, yeah. Got to give him a little bit of uh, respect and well being. Yeah, it, a little it, bit of hope. 
Yeah, this is a Star Wars hope. <laughs> I'm talking about that Obama. I'm talking about that Obama Star Wars hope. The, the Star <laughs> hybrid, <laughs> hybrid hope. Yeah. Uh, well, I had. I know. Um, what was it uh, one of our one of our other uh, coworkers, uh, Epi? He was uh, he was telling me that. Epi, that, Epi. Epi, yeah, for the tech guy. He's epic. <laughs> He's epic! Look at that. Shout out to Epi. <laughs> Shout out to Epi. He's my neighbor. I haven't visited him yet. That's right. You live like four doors away from him or something. Four doors away, but we're not saying where. <laughs> I'll give you my computer so you can, you can fix it. <laughs> I'll take it for you. You'll take it for me? All right, yeah. I need, I need it I'll save you that shipping cost. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so you know you're charging me $10 for gas. <laughs> I'm going to bill you for $6 shipping and handling. <laughs> Even though I didn't use a ship. I just handled it. <laughs> <laughs> just handled it. But yeah, I mean, uh, some, something that Epi was telling me is that uh, he was talking about how he could change the world. And obviously, he, 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 made, he, he told me, you know, I'm just sitting here fixing computers. But I know if I can change someone's view of things, give them the, uh, I would say like... Um, An insight or something? Insight, or, yeah, or, or stuff like that. Like, to make them feel better about themselves or... Or just change their own way, that they can make changes, and maybe they can change that person. That's obviously gonna do bigger changes than we are. Hell yeah, we're changing the world. We don't. We yeah, don't everything's s- connected. Everything is connected. We don't necessarily have to be out being Captain America out there, you know. With to, the cape on, saving people. You yeah, know? saving the you world. You can do it slowly and gradually, you know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't. You probably won't even get to see that, but. I know that person did change, and that's that's good, that's enough a good change uh, to change the world. So change people in the positive way. Oh, that's... Every little effort adds up, you know. Yes. Because if you make someone's day, they'll be positive, and they might do a good job on something that they have to do, which brings them joy and then success, and then they're able to help other people out. So it just continue. It builds upon. It just it's a everyone puts in their Lego piece to make like. You know, it's the big circle structure. of life. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I, that, I, that's how I see it. Shout out to Whoopi Goldberg for one, being <laughs> one of the hyenas. <laughs> one of my favorite characters. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goddamn, I, I'm not gonna leave that on there. <laughs> I know we can't start talking about Elton John right now. Elton John, Elton John's dope. Yeah, Academy Award winning. Hans Zimmer's too. Shout out to Hans Zimmer. Man, this is like shout out season right here. <laughs> yep. You but can, we're just. We're just in here, man. We're just a- avoiding that global warming. Yeah, let's look at my fan on. I don't, I don't know you guys can probably hear it. You'll probably hear my fan. It's, it's in the background. If you're in the future kinda... and you're listening to this, it's 2017 and we still use fans. <laughs> <laughs> ACs are too expensive still. <laughs> <laughs> That's the state of the economy. That is the state of the economy. <laughs> we need to switch to solar solar power now. Hell yeah, dude. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that as the future coming pretty damn soon, too. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> we need to. And, but yeah, so here we are. So like I said, this is Philosophy Podcast. We talk about modern day pop culture, which we did. And its impacts on us. It's very, very big important. impacts. And uh, so yeah, so like I said, what's Gucci, bro? <laughs> what's Gucci? And, and life is good. Life is good so far for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> Gotta but, yeah. keep at it. Gotta keep at it. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm Julio. And I'm Kevin. And you guys have a good day. Catch you later. Thank you.